Hey everyone, my name is Wed. We're nearing the end of Guilds of Ravnica spoiler season, but we're not quite done yet. In today's video, we're looking at a bomb troll, a ridiculous Demir vampire assassin, a new browbeat, and more. I do hope you enjoyed the video, and if you do, remember to hit that like button. Helps out a lot. Citywide Bust is one of anything and too white for sorcery. Destroy all creatures with toughness for greater. Oof, I'm a huge fan of cheap mass removal and this one has me in a tizzy. This is stellar against stompy decks that pump out huge creatures. Three mana is more than affordable enough for an effect like this. It'll do a fine job in taking down beefcakes. Also, can we get an RIP for Arcadis and Brawl or really anywhere? Citywide Bust is going to make that poor dragon real sad, almost like the bust was made with Arcadis in mind. Huh. Nah, that'd be too cruel, right? Gird for battle is one white mana for a sorcery. Put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. Real cheap for two power and toughness. This is a solid card in a mentor type Boros deck. Spread the love around. The only problem is that it's sorcery speed, so you can't really trick anyone with this. I think if it can see play, it'll be in limited as a way to present more board pressure against your opponent. But even then, I firmly believe there are better options out there. Light of the Legion is four of anything and two white for a 5-5 angel with flying and mentor. When it dies, put a plus one plus one counter on each white creature you control. Wow, this angel's pretty dang huge. Six mana for a 5-5 five, five with flying and mentor is absolutely playable. But then when it dies, it anthems your white creatures too. So gross. This is a card I know I'll see in Commander until the end of time. I'm talking Lyra, Avacyn, Aurelia the War Leader, Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight. So good in Commander. And I know I say that a lot, but you have to admit, this card has the right creature type, the right color identity, the right triggers, and the right stats to be hugely powerful in that format. It's a solid card right here. Gruesome Menagerie is three of anything and two black for a sorcery. Choose a creature card with converted mana cost one in your graveyard. Then do the same for creature cards with converted mana cost two and three. Return those cards to the battlefield. This card casts a pretty wide net. It's mono black, so it can feasibly fit into any creature based deck that runs black. We're talking Golgari graveyard nonsense, vampires, pirates even. Being able to pick and choose creatures from your yard in an aggressive deck is strong. This can gain you a crazy amount of board presence quickly and for a fair cost. Especially devastating and limited, I think this could see sideboard standard play in creature decks. It's a cool card. Electrostatic Field is two mana for a 0-4 wall with Defender. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, the field deals one damage to each opponent. This technically isn't an is it card, but it really is. This card is designed for that spell slinging counter burn deck. This is going to deal a lot of incidental damage while also protecting you from the onslaught on the other side of the board. Most of the time, these blue red decks don't worry about blocking, mainly because they can't. The only creatures they play are for utility or winning the game via attacking. Electrostatic field is huge value over the course of the game and it helps protect your life total at the same time. It gives Gives you a bit more reach into the mid to late game. This is like Thermo Alchemist, but in some ways, a lot of ways, better. Love this card. This might be what tips me over the edge to actually build this for real and standard. Experimental Frenzy is four mana for an enchantment. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may play the top card of your library. You can play cards from your hand. You can also pay four mana to destroy the Frenzy. <laughs> this card's wonderfully hysterical. You belong in one place, my friend. Zedru, that's right. Your job is to get donated to someone who can't produce red mana. Hilarious. I don't know if this is actually useful anywhere. I don't really care. But you're going straight to my opponents who will absolutely cry. It's so delicious. You're so delicious. Risk factors, three mana for an instant with jump star. Target opponent may have a risk factor deal four damage to them. If that player doesn't, you draw three cards. This card is so good. Some of you have to remember a brow beat, right? That card was actually legit in aggro decks. Both options were fine with you. Risk factor is no different, except this time you get to do it at instant speed, which is ridiculous, and you get to jumpstart it. So it's like forcing them to choose twice. In standard, they're not going to want to do that. Maybe they'll be okay with taking four once. Maybe even twice, but three times? Four? They can't keep taking damage like that. With enough risk factor in your deck, you are going to draw cards. Your opponents literally can't afford to stop you forever. Jumpstart on this card is why it's a rare. This is one of the more powerful rares we've seen in this 
this set. Do not sleep on this card. It makes red decks much better than you think. Four risk factors, eight casts, think about that. Flower is one hybrid green or white mana for a sorcery. Search your library for a basic forest or plains card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Flourish is four of anything, one green and one white for a sorcery. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two until end a turn. I know I sound like a broken record, but I love the versatility. You know how annoying it is to get a ramp or fixing spell towards the end of the game? It's like a dead card, not here though. Flourish gives this thing a ton of late game value and makes it worth it to include in decks looking to fix their mana early. Flower's awesome in the early game. Flourish late, what a one-two punch. At least this will be useful at all stages of the game. Perfectly fine limited card, at least. Tajik Legion's Edge is one of anything, one red and one white for a 3-2 legendary creature, human soldier with haste and mentor. Prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to other creatures you control. You can also pay two mana and Tajik gains first strike until end of turn. My goodness, Tajik has come a long way since the last time we saw him. Protecting his entire team instead of just himself, I like it. Now, the most important thing about this card is the artwork. Look at this. Now, does that sort of fire coming out of it? Is that fire? Is it electricity? Gas? I have no idea. Look how shiny his armor is. He looks like a raid boss from World of Warcraft. Anyways, haste is great. Mentor is great. Being able to stop Slagstorm against the rest of the team. Pretty great, and gaining first strike, you guessed it, great. Giving him a combat relevant keyword and mentor on the same card, that's good design. He's cheap, efficient, clearly meant to lead a large army into battle, fine for a commander, for limited, and I definitely think it's good for standard too. Damage base removal is relatively all over the place. Tajik is a shield against at least one of those spells. Rough translation, Bolt Splicer Mage is one blue and one red for a 2-2 two -two Vidalcan Wizard. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets only the mage, if you control one or more other creatures that the spell could target, you may choose one of them, copy the spell, and it targets the chosen creature. Cards like this are good with strong combat pump spells that you can swing in like crazy with a few powerful creatures, but right now... Right now, I don't think we're seeing the necessary amount of cheap and powerful pumps that would make this card worthy in an Is It deck. Possibly a teamer deck of sorts, maybe? I do like the design, I enjoyed the design of Zada too, but it's about finding a place for this and that's kind of where I'm stuck right now. Itrata the Silencer is two of anything, one blue and one black for a 3-5 legendary creature vampire assassin that can't be blocked. Whenever Atrada deals combat damage to a player, exile target creature that player controls and put a hit counter on that card. That player loses the game if they own three or more exiled cards with a hit counters on them. Atrada's owner shuffles Atrada into their library. <laughs> <laughs> Wizards. Now this is an assassin, my goodness. Atrada is so gross. Thank goodness you have to shuffle her back into the deck because wow, it'd be insane if you didn't have to. Not only is this a weird version of Infect kind of, but it is removal. She gets to exile a creature on her way to a hit counter. Okay, I'm going to show you something and you can just let it sink in for a second. Itrada, Helm of the Host, Strionic Resonator. Then you have Command Beacon because you can return her to the command zone instead of shuffling her into your library. I just, Itrada's insane. She's insane. I have to build this deck. I have to Itrada hit woman deck tech incoming. Mnemonic Betrayal is one of anything, one blue and one black for a sorcery. Exile all cards from all opponent's graveyards. You may cast those cards this turn, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any type to cast those spells. At the beginning of the next end step, if any of those cards remain exiled, return them to their owner's graveyards, exile the betrayal, Hot diggity, we finally got a monstrous mythic for a reasonable cost. Three mana to get access to literally everything in all graveyards, and you can cast it any way you want. That's so gross. It's like Yagmas will, but you know, kind of fair. This would go well in any kind of mill strategy. You keep milling all of your opponents, and then you can choose from so much on your way to milling them out for good. We're looking at you, Phoenix. Show us something great, my boy. 
Charnel Troll is one of anything, one black and one green for a 4-4 troll with trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, put a plus one plus one counter on the troll, otherwise sacrifice it. You can also pay one black, one green, and discard a creature card to put a plus one plus one counter on the troll. Holy undergrowth, Batman. This troll is so greedy and gluttonous. Three mana for a 4-4 four, four definitely turns some heads, so you have to expect a downside, which there technically is. But the troll fuels its own downside and gets plus one plus one counters along the way. Each creature card in your hand effectively becomes two plus one plus one counters and helps to keep the troll alive. This is another reason Surveil is going to work well with the Golgari. Dump things into your yard to keep these affordable creatures happy. Dropping this on turn three, then getting to untap with it in limited or even standard is pretty dangerous. Now, this isn't lost on me. The troll does eat through undergrowth synergy by exiling creatures, but in a super aggressive deck, which this card is meant for, by the way, I think you're going for immediate payoff, right? Sultai, Surveil, Graveyard, Nonsense, something's coming, it has to be. I keep thinking spoiler season is going to end, but it just doesn't. Today we were graced with a whole bunch of crazy rares and playables of all rarities. I think the set is looking better and better each day for Commander, Limited, and even Standard, but what I really want to know is what you think. So please just let me know your thoughts about these cards in the comments and pretty please if there are deck techs you want made with these cards, let me know so I can start working on them. Thumbs up other suggestions you see in the comments that you like. We're all in this together, right? And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. Guilds of Ravnica booster boxes are still, still pre-ordering for $91 each. That is such a good price. What are you doing, friends? If you don't have a local game store or yours is charging just way too much, I got you back right here. All you have to do is click the link. It helps the channel. You get boxes for a great price. We all win. Everything's amazing. The world is wonderful. I love you all. Okay, I'll just, I'll stop, but you know, enjoy. Seriously, risk factor is insane. Like, this card makes me want to play red. <sighs> Can't believe I just <sighs> let's get past that. <sighs>